You are now listening to a message from Eka Christian Center. Get set to be at the fire. God has blessed you. Yes. Praise God. Can you lift up your Bibles? Lift it up in the air. Lift it up as though you don't care. Say this with me. This is my Bible. I, I'm, I'm glad that the number of Bibles is increasing. Say this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. Ah, louder. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly declare, I will hear what is taught, and I will do what is taught. In Jesus' name. Amen. I don't say, Pastor, this Bible thing, I like coming to church with my phone, you know. The challenge with phones and scriptures is that you can be distracted. Amen. That's why you have some people that are chatting on WhatsApp during service. Glory to God. Or they are on Twitter during service. Or when the worship is going on, they are live streaming themselves worshiping. <laughs> oh, dear Lord Jesus. <laughs> Everybody say, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't worry. You have not had an encounter yet. Just one encounter. You will, not, you will stop doing that. Praise God. Because the moment you have an encounter with the Lord, the one you claim to be worshiping, you are lost in the consciousness of him. Self dies, you know. Self just is obliterated. It's now going to be that you are lost in the consciousness of him. Praise God. Now, today we are going to be looking at the measures of the Spirit. The measures of the Spirit. Hmm. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Ezekiel. We are going to be in mass today. Hallelujah. We are going to be imparted today. Praise God. Um, we're going to live here with another kind of clothing. We will be, all right, God is going to clothe us with his power in Jesus' name. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 47. Let us read from verse 1. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 47 and from verse 1. What does it say? Can we read it? 1, 2, go. It says what? And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood towards the east. And the waters came down from under from the right side of the house. At the south side of the altar. Next verse. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the altar gate, by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out what? Waters on the right side. Mm. Continue reading. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits. And he brought me what? He brought me what? Through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Praise God. He brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Now, next. I again, he measured. Now, notice that he is measuring and stopping. So, he measures a thousand cubits, then brings the man. And he stops, ankle. Are you seeing this? He measures, brings him, stops, ankle. Then the next he says, again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were towards the knees. See that? That's another level, the knees. Then he says, again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. Where toward? The loins. That's the waist. So you have ankle level, you have knee level, then you have what? The waist. Then the next now says, all right, afterward, he measured what? And it was what? A river that I could not what? Pass over for the waters were risen. Waters to swim in a river that could not be passed over. So we are seeing four dimensions or four depths to this river. Ankle deep waters, knee deep waters, loin deep waters, and swimming waters. Glory to God. Now, so what do the waters speak of? Because if we read, all right, downwards, we now begin to find out that the waters were waters of healing and waters of restoration, and waters of prosperity. So what do the waters speak of? Hallelujah. 
Well, the Bible talks about that these waters flowed from the temple of God. These waters flowed from a place where God was supposed to reside. Now, look at what Jesus says about rivers of living water. St. John's Gospel, chapter number 7, from verse 37 to 39. Hallelujah. John 7, 37 to 39. Can we read one to go? John 7, 37 to 39. What does he say? Quickly. Praise God. Huh? Okay, it's on the screen there. Can we read one to go? It says what? In the last day, yes. He says, if any man tests, let him come unto me and what? Continue reading. He says what? He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his church, out of what? Shall rivers of living water. Okay. So, the rivers of living water, where do they flow from? They flow from what? Jesus. Because he said, as the scripture had said. The scripture speaks to Jesus. As the scripture has said, out of his belly flows rivers of living water. So, that means the river of living water flows from Jesus to what? To everybody. Glory to God. Well, now, guys, are you noticing something? If you go back, to, go back in your mind to Ezekiel chapter 47, you will notice that the closer you are to the source of the river, the shallower it is. Right? Right? You measure a thousand from the, the, the temple, it's, one, it's, it's ankle deep. You measure another time, it's thousand, is what? It's needed. You measure another thousand, is what? Wasted. You measure another time, is what? So, uh, the further away you are, <laughs> hallelujah, the further away you are from the temple, the deeper the waters. Glory to God. I said glory to God. There are a lot of us that like to be, oh, you want to fellowship with Jesus, all right? So you want to pray, but you don't want to go out and reach people. You think that, all right, your intimacy with Jesus is deepened by just spending time with him and not going to reach the people he wants you to reach. You are going to find out that the degree to which you will see a deeper manifestation of the glory of God is the degree to which you are you journey far in obedience to reach the people that you ought to reach. Glory to God. Now, I've taught you, I think two weeks ago, I told you that because we are in Christ, we have access to the fullness of the Spirit. Remember that? Remember that? We have access to the fullness of the Spirit. Access to the fullness of the Spirit. The Spirit without measure, we have access to the fullness of spirit because we are in Christ. But we do not all currently function in that fullness. To function in that fullness, when I'm talking about functioning in that fullness, I'm talking about functioning in the manifestation, there are certain things that must occur. Glory to God. And I'll prove it to you from Scripture. So we've said that the river of living water here, all right, is talking of the Holy Spirit. The power of God, the presence of God. Jesus is the temple of God. He is the source of the river of living water that flows to everyone to drink. Look at Revelation chapter 22 verse 1. Another corroborative scripture. Revelation 22 and verse 1. Can we read? What does it say? One, two, go. What does it say? And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Clear as crystal. Proceeding what? Out of the throne of God and of... See that? Proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Same thing we just read in Ezekiel chapter 47. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the presence of the Holy Ghost. Like St. John's God 7, 37, 39 shows us. Hallelujah. It is a healing river. It is a restorative, all right, river. Now, the fact, listen, now that the, the fact that this river flows outwards points to the kind of oppression of the Spirit being discussed. Because there is a oppression of the Spirit of God that does not flow outward, but flows within you. Glory to God. Should I show that to you? St. John's Gospel chapter 4. John 4, all right, and verse 13. 
Jesus is speaking to a lady by the well. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, I said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Someone is being healed of a pain in the right leg. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Arthritis is being healed right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There's someone that has frequent palpitation. You, you, palpitation is you feel as though your heart is beating, you know, you, uh, you know this, your heart. Hallelujah. Irregular heartbeats. The heartbeat is irregular. Glory to God. You are healed in the name of Jesus. I said you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. You are healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Lord. Yes, healed. Wait, what, 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 what scripture? John 4, 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever does what? Drinketh of this water, shall what? Test again. Verse 14, everybody want to go, it says what? Shall never test. But the water that I shall give him shall be where? Shall be where? In him. See that? In him. Not, does it flow out? In. So these waters are in. Glory to God. In him. All right, shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Shall be in him. So this is an operation within. Hallelujah. But the other one we have been studying, all right, is talking about a river that flows outwards. Glory to God. Outwards. That is talking about an operation of the Spirit to bless other people apart from yourself. So the Spirit within, the oppression of the Spirit within is for you, to bless you, to help you, to guide you. That's where the leading of the Spirit comes in, the Spirit within, to bless you. But when it comes to the Spirit upon or the flow of the Spirit outward, that is to bless others. Acts 1. Glory to God. The Lord says to me, he said, <laughs> it's a few days ago, many of them are coming to be saved, but I'm going to make saviors out of them. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I'm going to make saviors out of them. Saviors out of them. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Glory to God. Acts 1 and verse 8. It says, but you shall receive what? Power. After that, the Holy Ghost is what? Come where? Come where? Upon. That is a operation of the Spirit outward. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both where? In Jerusalem. So that means the operation of the Spirit is to witness to others. So it is an operation to others. Are you following so far? Church, are you following so far? Yes. It's an operation unto others. So that means the, uh, the, the push of the Spirit upon is for others. So to the degree to which you give yourself to ministering to others is the degree to which you will grow in the operations of the Spirit. Because if you want to see signs and wonders and you are always about you, you will not grow. In the spirit upon. But the spirit upon is for others, not you. Hallelujah. It's why you will see a pastor can be ministering to the sick while he is sick. Because that anointing to heal that is in manifestation is not for him. It's for what? For others. <laughs> Amen. And if he does not learn how to use what God has given him that is inside of him to get results for himself, he will suffer as though he doesn't have it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Are you learning something? Now I want to show you something that is important about 
this river that we're talking about in Ezekiel chapter 47. Number one, it's a river that is a healing river. Number two, it's a restorative river. And number three, it's that it's a river of prosperity. Go back there. Ezekiel 47. Glory to God. Ezekiel 47. Look at verse 8. Ezekiel 47, verse 8. What does he say? Then he said unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the water shall be what? Healed. They are waters of healing. So the power of the Spirit of God upon you, what does it do? What does it do? Talk to me. It heals others. It heals others. It heals others. Glory to God. It heals others. Praise God. Amen. Look at um, Acts 10, 38. He said, Our God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Are you seeing that? So the operation is for the benefit, the healing of others. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now, if you go to Ezekiel 47, 12, you now find that world giver is also for prosperity. <laughs> the prosperity of nations. The prosperity of others. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Your entrance into a company can be the beginning of prosperity in that company. Sister, your entrance into a man's life can be the beginning of prosperity in that man's life. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Why? Because you carry within you a prosperity river. Someone say amen. All right? You show up and things get better. Glory to God. You show up and things get better. Things were going left. You show up, they begin to go right. Hallelujah. Why? Because of the river of God that is flowing from you. Glory to God. Now look at verse 12. He says, and by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow what? All trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. He shall bring forth new fruit according to his month, because there are waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for what? For medicine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Now, listen, though the believer is immersed into the Spirit of God as salvation, all of the Spirit of God as salvation, the journey into the fullness of the expression and manifestation of the Holy Ghost is a process. It's the reason why many of you, after you got saved, you didn't speak in tongues immediately. It's the reason why many of you, after you got saved, you didn't get anybody, see, get anybody healed. After some time, you got to learn the word of God. Hands were laid on you. Then you took steps of faith. Then you began to see manifestations. You now began to express that which you already had. Hallelujah. The journey into the fullness of expression and manifestation is a process. As believers, though we are in all the fullness of God, we manifest and express the Holy Ghost in measures. We manifest and express the Holy Ghost in measures. Notice, everybody, look up. Remember, the angel measured 1,000 and brought him to a level. Then measured another 1,000 and brought him to a level. Then measured another thousand and brought him to a level. Which means every dimension that he ascended in was instigated by God. Correct? Church, correct? Yes. Measured a thousand, took him and stopped him. Measured a thousand, took him and stopped him. Hallelujah. When you get to a dimension, a level, God has brought you this thing. You are not going to go to the next level until you do some things. Until you use that level you have been brought in well. One of the greatest 
injustice that has been done to young believers, especially those who are new creation realities and all that, is that they've been told that they have all of the Holy Ghost that they are ever going to have, praise God, and can do any, you know, any manifestation that they are ever going to. But the problem is the teaching is not lining up with reality. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Come on now. How many of you understand what I'm saying? It's not lining up. So you have guys, okay, who have had encounters with God in Holy Ghost meetings, new creation, and all that, all right? They don't fast. They don't pray. They don't consecrate themselves. They don't separate themselves to the Lord. They don't obey the promptings of the Spirit. They don't do the Word. But they will come out and say, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. They don't go on outreaches. They are called spiritually, but they know how to talk Christianese. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. They know how to talk Christianese. The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Listen to me. You are probably functioning at a level, and you are not going to go to the next level until you do what is required. You don't grow into the fullness of God's manifestation being lazy with spiritual, with spiritual exercises. No. Look at Jesus. Hallelujah. Just look at Jesus. Many people miss this thing about Jesus. Look up. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. When he went to the Jordan and was baptized by John the Baptist, I would have thought, I would have thought, that after he came up the Jordan, what should I have done? Go and start a ministry. But that's not what happened. It was so dramatic and all. Jesus gets up after being baptized in the river, all right, and a voice came from heaven and says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. I thought, that's it. Go and do ministry. If, if, if it was me, I would have ensured it was captured, you know, all right, you know, Instagram live and, you know, that voice, they will capture it, then they will play it, then we do a sponsored post of that voice from heaven. So everybody is saying, ah, oh, more this guy, you look at God from heaven, no. But what happens? The Bible says that the Holy Ghost drove Jesus into what? The wilderness. To be tempted of the devil. 40 days. Listen, <laughs> hallelujah. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. God said, this is my beloved son. You want this? And the Holy Ghost are feeding, drove him to the wilderness. To stay in the wilderness with snakes, scorpions, lions, and wild animals. To pray for 40 days. Then the Bible now says, after passing the tests, after 40 days, you know what it says? It says, and Jesus returned in the what? Power of the Spirit. Yeah. So that means there is a difference between being filled with the Spirit and returning in the what? Power of the Spirit. Don't announce yourself too soon. There is a cooking that is necessary. Let God cook you. Glory to God. Did you hear what I said? There is a cooking that is necessary. There is a training that is necessary. 40 days, son of God, who are you? Jesus, son of God, 40 days in the wilderness. <laughs> you, you are sitting on that AC, crossing your leg and saying, Jesus paid it all. Kabasofa, safafa. <laughs> Jesus paid it all. He did it all. He did it all. You, you hear some people say, you should pray. No, Jesus prayed so that I will not pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> I remember there's a guy that sang a song. He said, I will pray, I will pray, I will pray, oh, I will pray, oh. If I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. Some Christian used to say, no, Satan will not make mess of us. We are the new creation in Christ. Whether we pray, we don't pray, Satan will not make mess of us. I said, it's because you have not seen battle. You're in Lagos. <laughs> God has been protecting you. Oh, Tiri in Kaka. By the time you see battle, that's why you know that that your consecration, that your firecracker consecration is nothing. You understand the meaning of that song. Glory to God. He measured another thousand. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. It's why the, the bishops, the people you say don't, don't know revelation knowledge, they are getting more results than you that with revelation knowledge. Because they are doing what is necessary. Bishop Oedeko is still going out every week to preach gospel. 
every week, Bishop, as successful as he is. Pastor Adebo is doing prayer work every day at 80. He's walking, speaking in tongues, walking. 80, 3 a.m. is walking. You, by 7, you are still snoring. Service of 8, you are coming 9.45. Who are you? Right after the God cries out. Full of the Holy Ghost. He, uh, I am full of the Spirit. Oh, calm down. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen. <laughs> you cannot fake depth in the spirit realm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You cannot fake it. If it didn't day, it didn't day. But you see, it has to day. Because you are born again. Glory to God. He was, he went and he spent time praying. And as he prayed, as he prayed, the Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit. Jesus will spend all night in prayer to God. Now, let me show you something. You may say, but Pastor, the apostles, this measuring 1,000, show us in the Bible now, because for the apostles, they just started, boom, and they were doing science. I will show you now, calm down. The mistake you are making is that you think that the difference between Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 3 was two days. Between Acts 2 and Acts 10 was about 20 years. Maybe we don't realize that. Are you ready to see? I want to, I, you want to see the journey? You want to see that journey? Good. Because we are going to pray today. God is going to promote some of us. I didn't say all. Do you know why I didn't say all? Because not everybody is willing. And God will not take you to a depth in him beyond your willingness to grow. He won't. He's a gentleman. He won't force you. Glory to God. If you say you want to still be relying on Baba's uh, amulet and ring that they gave you, you understand? You think that one is power. Ring. Hallelujah. Ring. To just, you know, some people go and get a ring so that they will sleep with women. Look at you. Your destiny. You tied it up to sleep with a woman. Sex. Do you see how ridiculous that thing is? You went, you came to this life to have sex. <laughs> this life. That's your existence about sex. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Leave, rob, leave play things for children. Come up, Peter. Look at your neighbor and say, come up, Peter. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's look at the scriptures. I'm teaching you this so that hunger can rise up in your heart. One major problem, one major issue that this wrong teaching has brought is that it has taken hunger away. Because believers are behaving as though they've arrived. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So if you have the arrival mentality when it comes to the workings of the things of God, you will not have hunger. Hunger is present where you are like, there is something I want to get to. I remember I had a problem with this teaching, with, uh, with Paul saying, um, I, 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 I am pressing to the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. How many of you remember that? He said, I, I, you know, I put everything I've achieved, I forget all the things I've done in the past, and I'm pressing to the mark of the high calling of God. I'm like, Paul, what are you talking about, man? Pressing to what? Where are you pressing to? After many years of ministry, Paul, Apostle Paul said, I am the chief of sinners. What Paul was, try, was trying to say is this, I am not considering that I have already apprehended, no. Because if I think I have arrived, then I have ended my journey. I must keep pressing. I must move from ankle to knee. Glory to God. I must move from knee to what? To the waist. I must move from the waist to what? To a river I can't swim past. The river, the river carries me. I don't swim in the river. Glory to God. So we grow in the manifestations of the Spirit in measures. Hallelujah. Let's look at this. Acts 1.8. It says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Is that correct? Church, talk to me. Is that correct? 
Uh -huh. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So he says power, that's dunamis. But in Acts 4.33, turn in there. Acts 4.33, he now tells us and puts a, you know, an adjectival prefix in front of the power. Mm. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. Look at me. Do you know that as, after you have been impacted today, you see miracles, signs, and wonders. If you do something immediately with it, maybe you begin, you begin to share the gospel. You begin to take responsibility. You begin to do something with the power and the impartation you have given. Do you know what will happen? You will grow. Let me use my wife as an example. Glory to God. Glory to God. I remember we were here last week when she preached. You enjoyed the sermon, have you? You were like, oh, what a wonderful man of God. Uh -uh. Look at a woman preaching like that. My wife was not always like that. Praise God. When we started dating, my wife was not even filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I lay down to not the death filled with the Spirit of God. I remember when I lay down, she didn't really speak much. She went to a concert, and it was that concert where, I don't know, maybe they were singing songs, and bah, the tongues came out. But this is what I noticed. Whenever I gave my wife videos of Benny Hinn to watch, she would watch it. Pastor Chris to watch, she would watch it. And I used to give her where they are ministering, you know, someone or demonstrating power of God. She, she kept feeding her heart with it, feeding her heart with it, feeding her heart with it. We gave her a little assignment, she would do it. She started going for outreaches herself, going to preach the gospel herself. As she was doing that, the measure of the spirit, that's the power of God and the expression. Do you know what's happening? It started growing. It started growing. What you are seeing here is the result of 10 years of work. It's not overnight. 10 years. Well, the mistake is you get imparted, you go home and you sleep. You do nothing with it. You do not absolutely nothing. We come and say we are imparting you for business expansion. Glory! My business has expanded. Siboya, Kabaya, Shondo. Then you go and sleep. Then you come next month to collect another prophecy of business expansion. I have a daughter. I'm not going to mention her name. She sews my clothes, my suits. I've given her a word of prophecy. Taya, Taya. Yeah, you are, amen. Pastor, amen. Oh, yeah, where is the shop? And you see, one person said that we will come here. Um, this is, so she was telling me some long So I said, Auntie, go and open shop. And you see, you see, one person said, he will go out, he's leaving the country. As he leaves the country, I said, the word of expansion is expanding on your head. But it has no place to rest because you are not taking the right actions. No matter how well imparted you are, if you don't take steps, nothing will change. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? How I many of you want to be used by God in supernatural? Praise God. You want, to, you want to speak and see reactions in people. You want to lay hands and see people healed. Preach the gospel, you will see it. You will see it. Start inviting, being intentional about, intentional about bringing people to church, inviting them to church. Come. The moment the Spirit of God sees that you are choosing to become a partner, He will partner with you. He will partner with you. The docile will not see anything. I decided I start doing this. I was on campus and I said, Lord, I'm going to get 1,000 people talking in tongues. 1,000. I had no platform. There was no church then. No visible means nothing. 1,000. And what was I doing? I got them filled with the Holy Ghost every night. Monday to Saturday was service day. How was I doing it? I would meet people in the classroom. I was, I'm a medical doctor. So I was in medical school. I would meet people in the classroom. There was a, a part two class in Medilag. I would get them, talk to them about the Holy Ghost, take them to the SOM field. Yesterday, somebody sent me a message. She's now in the United Kingdom. Oh, I was so blessed by it. She's now in the United Kingdom. She's a pastor because I saw her. She uploaded a story where she was preaching. And that same time, I said, wow, well done. She said, pastor, thank you. She said, remember that in 2007, you got me filled with the Holy Ghost in SOM field. 2007. 
It is as you begin to cooperate and partner with the Spirit of God. It is like that. Ordinary church invitation. That's partnering. You don't see that. The measure will begin to increase. The degree to which you yield is the degree to which that measure and expression of the Spirit will increase. One day, you will find out that they will bring a dead person to your house. You will lay hands on that dead person and person will rise up. But if you do not sin, you will not see anything. Hallelujah. My son, Pastor Tiwi, the pastor of our UK church, same thing. I look at what I have not stepped into our UK church till today. Yet they are getting healed. People are getting filled with the Spirit. People are getting saved. How? Because back then, years ago, go out for outreach. Unilag. Then when he got to Medilag, every Saturday, outreach. Himself and his wife. So when it was time to step into another assignment, that measure of the Spirit to get it done was waiting for them. Don't joke with the Holy Ghost. If you look at him as someone that doesn't matter, you will not matter to all. I'm telling you, you will remain at one low level. The measure to which you yield is the measure to which you will see manifestations. Where did I say it's open? Acts 4, Abby. We are look at Acts 4. Acts 4, 33. Look at what he says. Great power. With great power, what does he say? With what? Great power gave the apostles witness of their resurrection. They started with power. Now they got to what? Great power. That is megatos dunamis. The dunamis they received in them was in the seed form. But as they began to engage it and walk the walk of ministry, it began to grow in leaps and bounds, such that it now talks about great power. With great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, and great grace was what? Upon them all. Turn to Acts 5. And, and verse 11. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Don't go and use impartation to be watching my you. Think about it. If after an impartation service, you finish every single thing, then Oa Philomon will Netflix. There are so many believers that they are easy. It's too easy to overthrow you. Too easy. Satan does not need to think much, you know. I have watched that thing when they went to steal something. That Spanish thing, they stole something. They went to bank, rob a bank. Huh? Eh? <clears throat> Good. So they were drawing table. Will we do this? As we do this? As we... Satan doesn't need to do that for many people. It's not hard. Ah, uh-uh, no, so don't worry. He won't even stop you from coming for an impartation. I'm on my hour of Netflix. I'm on my read in bed. No worry. That's what you read in bed, no? You just enter scene. Don't worry. <laughs> you understand? That today is the last day your life is like that. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with Netflix. I'm saying that let meetings that should set you on fire set you on fire. Let it catch fire. Be flammable. Hallelujah. Be flammable. God is trying to change the course of your life. Allow him to change it. Hallelujah. You sat down, sat down on chair, sat down on chair, sat down on chair. Your, the impression of your seat is on your bum bum. Sat down, sat down, every Sunday, sat down, sat down. Receive it. Ah! You, what have you done with this receive, the thing you have received? It will not grow until you do something. I'm telling you, it won't grow. You will need to say, ah, this one, I will tell somebody about Jesus. Even if it's one person, I will. This one, I will bring someone to church with me. You know, I, I'm shy. You, you are shy. The impartation, it will, will unshy you. Hallelujah. It has unshied you now. Do something with it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. There's a brother here, Brother Divine. I don't know why. I think I've just met him a few weeks. The guy is now organizing bus from Lasso to church. Just one guy. You know. Just him. He organizes a bus from Lasso. He came by his own self and said, no, I, I want to bring bus. After a sermon like this some weeks ago, I want to bring bus from Lasso to church. One person. Now, imagine if everybody was like that. 
Now, if he continues, he, the way we end up is clear. Because the measure and the influence of the Spirit will continue growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. Grow. That is how it works. The Holy Ghost is looking for people to partner with. If you partner with him, he will continue partnering with you. It is people that have their mind of the Spirit that the Spirit puts things on his mind on theirs. There are certain things you will not hear from the Holy Ghost if your mind is not on the things of the Spirit. So, the measures of the Spirit, you will increase in the measure of the Spirit to the degree to which you take responsibility. Growth in the Holy Ghost is not for funfair. Hallelujah. He says, and with great power. Now look at Acts 5. Someone say, I hear. Lord, I say, I hear. Acts 5. Now he says, and great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Next verse, verse 12 says what? And listen, and by the what? Where many and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with our heart accord. You can see that the, the dimension is increasing. Acts 1 8, Dunamis. Acts 2. Was anybody healed in Acts 2? No. They just spoke in tongues and prophesied. Correct? Correct. Acts 3, one person gets healed. Acts 4, with great grace, gave the apostles what? Witness. Acts 5, he now talks about what? Signs and wonders. It's growing. The more they went, the more it increased. Because the river flows outward. The more you give yourself to missions, the more you give yourself to the work of God, the more you will grow in the measure. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. Now, we are, this is verse 12. Now, can we go to verse 15 into 16? He said, no, let us start from verse 14. Let's see what's in 14. He says, and believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes both of men and women. Verse 15, everywhere we want to go. He says what? In so much that they brought forth the what? The sick into the streets. No, wait, 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 wait. The Bible says, previously, God wrought special signs and wonders through the hands. So that means, until hands were laid, no signs and wonders happened. Correct? Church now, correct? Now, we ask another level, see? In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on the beds and couches. That what? At the what? The shadow of Peter. Passing by. Aya. So that means, glory to God, Peter was getting people healed without his own will being involved. Remember the river. Remember the river level. At the ankle, you are moving. At the knee, you are moving. Waist level, you are moving. But you now get to a point where instead of you moving the river, the river is the one moving you. Hallelujah. His shadow was now healing the sick. Say with me. More, more comes with responsibility. One of the most dangerous things to do in church is to give a man or woman posts or position in church that is not commensurate to their commitment, it will kill them. Because the position will attract a devil. You are not yet functioning in a measure to deal with. You must, must grow, you must grow. Take on the responsibility so that the coat, the mantle can fit. Tell loud, the mantle fits me. Loud, I say it fits me. Say the mantle of fire fits me. Hallelujah. So there are depths. 
depths of the operations of God. And as we cooperate, with, listen to me, listen to me. You say, but pastor, eh, I see I have some habits. I see I have some issues. I see I have some these things. Let me tell you something. Stop allowing your imperfections stop you from being used by God. Many of these habits you are struggling with, they will fall by the wayside the moment you start getting serious with God. The reason why you are still stuck in it is because you are, it has your attention. Glory to God. Sister, you that you are dating, uh, I don't know. You understand? You are not, you know, are doing sex wrong. Don't, you say, ah, pastor, ah, I can't give, I can't be inviting people to church. I can't be preaching gospel because, you know, you know, before I can't, they will say, ah, you, you that I slept with, you that, my dear, your way out of that lifestyle is to publicly stand with Jesus. To publicly stand with Jesus. Guys, look at me. Everybody, guys, look at me. If you have been sharing Jesus Christ, holiness, this thing on Twitter, is it going to be easy for you to enter someone's DM and be asking for news? Ah. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to create another persona like some foolish people do. To do stupid things. Start for Jesus. Stand where? Not with a leg, proper leg. Stand where? That is where the promotion is. Glory to God. Don't let your imperfections stop you. You are the one robbing yourself. Oh. You are robbing yourself. You, are, you say, I'm standing Jesus. They say, you, you have this habit. You have this. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Say, Jesus likes me like that. I am not perfect. I'm what? Growing unto perfection. He will keep using you. He will keep using you. Then you will get to a point and you will find out that, ah, ah, these things I was struggling with before, I'm no longer struggling with them. Yes, that's how it works. Jesus doesn't say, clean yourself up and come to me. No. He says, come to me, I'll clean you up. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Let me round up because we need to pray. How many of you came here to pray and receive? Put your hand up. I said, put your hand up. Hallelujah. Some visas are going to be released this morning. Hallelujah. Some approvals are going to be released this morning. Glory to God. Manifestation of healing received this morning. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Now, so I want you to see a particular scripture that is perfect for measures of the Spirit. Look at Acts of Apostles chapter number 8. And verse 5. It had to do with Philip, the evangelist. At this time, Philip was not called an evangelist. He was just a deacon. He was deacon Philip. All right? Persecution came up and they were scattered. The church was scattered across. All right? Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. I said, praise God. The Lord just said something to me. I found that amazing. He said, just this branch, just this branch, that if the people here hearing you would listen to me and they will yield to me, I will use them all around the world. Hallelujah. I will use them all around the world. I will use them all around the world. That's what the Spirit said. I will use them all around the world. All around the world. I will bypass protocols for them. This is the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. If they will yield. Glory to God. But I say she open. Acts 8 5. Now look at it. It says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached what? Christ unto them. Next verse. He says what? And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles. Now, what miracles? Pay attention. Church, pay attention. Pay attention. What was the miracles which he did? Verse 7. Everybody read one, two, go. He says what? For uncles. Crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with what? Palsies, and that were, were what? So, you only had two kinds of miracles happening through Philip's ministry. Number one, evil spirits left people. Number two, the lame walked. Blind didn't see, deaf didn't hear, nothing else happened but these two. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, how do we know? Pay attention, watch. Praise God. I said, praise God. Now, look at this. Quickly, listen. Because... In verse 14, look at verse 14. Look at it, pay attention. 
Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. 15. Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might what? Oh. Next verse. 16. For as yet, he was what? Falling upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord. Oh, my God. So, Philip preached. The lame walked, and unclean spirits left, but nobody got filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you seeing this? Church, are you seeing this? So, that means there were certain manifestations that were present, and certain manifestations that were what? Absent. Now, when the apostles came, the people started getting filled with the Holy Ghost. So, the measure you walk in determines what manifestation is demonstrated. This is where we are going to stop. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now, if you go to 18, Acts 18, hallelujah. Ah, if you are hungry this morning, walk back and come. Praise God. You will collect. You go collect, you go collect. You go collect, you go collect. I go collect, you go collect. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. But what you collect, you only grow in the manifestation of it if you use it. Acts 8, look at it. And when Simon, listen up. Can we go to verse 16 again? So you can see what it was saying. 16. Acts 8, 16. For as yet it was falling upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. 17, everybody read. He says what? And they received the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now, next verse, 18. And when Simon saw, now, who is Simon? Simon was a sorcerer, right? If you read the earlier verses. He said, and when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, not Philip's hands, apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Next verse, look at what he says, 19. Saying, give me also this power, that whomsoever I lay hands, he may what? So that means that ability could be what? Transferred. Oh, come on now. Come on now. It could be what? Transferred. That give me, that's didomi. It means pardon me. It means to give, put it in my possession. Now look at what the, the apostle says. 20. He says, but Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with... So... Paul was, um, Peter was not saying it couldn't be transferred. He said because the issue is you wanted to buy it. Are you following what I'm saying? So notice, the measure that was at work in Peter was not at work in Philip. So it limited the results Philip could get. But later on, Philip grew. Because if we read, all right, the book of Acts, the Bible says that Philip had four daughters. Four. Who did what? Prophesy. Who do you think would have impacted them? It must have been what? Philip. Glory to God. I said glory to God. You may be at the measure, measure when you preach the gospel, the only thing that happens is that people get saved. You don't know how to do anything else. Hallelujah. So when you preach, they just get saved. Then you move to the level, you preach, they get saved and they get filled with the Holy Ghost with everyone speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Then you now begin to see people getting healed. Without you, you know, first you have to lay hands on them, they get healed. Then you now get to the point that without you laying hands on them, they get healed. Glory to God. Then you now get to the point that because you are in the building, they get healed. <laughs> Glory to God. You enter the crusade ground, they get healed. Are you following what I'm saying? Measure. Measures, 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 measures. All right, increasing measure comes with more responsibility. I must promise you, look at me. If you're going to go into higher levels with God, there is a level of dying that is necessary. You see this life where you want to live for yourself, you cannot do it and combine it with God. That's why some pastors, because they don't want it, they're going to be collecting juju and be using demonic power and stuff like that. And it will destroy them. Glory to God. You, you, 
And let me tell you something. Look at me. Everybody look at me. There is nothing, nothing that can compare to being used by God to help people. The joy, one million dollars cannot buy it. One million dollars cannot buy it. There is that joy. Like, ha, ah, you use me. Lord, thank you for using me. Glory to God. I was talking to a young man. He was telling me, oh, about one of my daughters who is in America. He was telling me, ah, that lady is very settled. She has real estate and stuff like that and stuff like that. I said, I know. I'm the one that prophesied it to her. I prophesied it to her and God opened her and she bought buildings everywhere in America. And she has tenants. I said, you did? He said, yes. I didn't give her money. All I gave her were words. Glory to God. It was words, words. But God backed it up. When you start walking with God, it's a different kind of living. Glory to God. As a wife, your husband is having issue with business. Glory to God. Ah! May God, may God make you a prophetic wife. What is your eyelashes? It's not going to help you. You get limits. It is limit. Listen, when the Holy Ghost comes on you, sister, men will, ah! That husband, there's a level of respect you have for you. You don't hear him say, honey, I have a presentation. <laughs> he says he's not talking to you about his business. Ah, oh, carry me. If he tells you, what will you tell him? He's not to tell you, ah, honey, I have one wig I want to buy. I really like this wig. You need to die to all those nonsense. Tobakari, ah, he will tell you. See, you see, we stand to make 30 billion <laughs> on this. You need to pray on it. I know God listens to you. I pray too, you know. I'm, you know just pray. Glory to God. And you speak words. He prays all the time. You don't say, hmm, babe, you're going to meet somebody, this thing, this thing. This is how the person looks. This is how the person looks. This is what the person is going to do. And he gets there and it is as you said. Men don't leave such wives, though. Uh, show Yahweh. Yahweh. They don't leave so <laughs> when he's not mad. If if he wants to leave eh, and say something happened that you said something he did not like, his father and mother, his brethren, they will come. They will come and be begging you. I've seen it happen. They will come and be begging the wife. They will come for family meeting. They won't talk to the husband. They will be begging the wife. Um, auntie, Emma Bino. Emma Bino. Korea Okenio. Emma Bino. I'm about sorry. Just enter. Let's talk to him. Because they know the weight of the woman. Glory to God. Are you ready for another level? I said, are you ready for another level? Yes, Listen, manifestation is a function of hunger and you willing to take responsibility. The moment you allow God to change, change your vision and say, Lord, wherever you want me to go, how far you want to take me, I'm ready. You make that decision. <laughs> there is no limit. I was watching a video of Catherine Kuma. I was wondering, in the 60s, 50s, and 70s, how was it that the leading evangelist of that time was a woman? Many of you have heard of Ora Roberts. You have heard of Kenny Higgy. Listen to me. The leading evangelist of their period was a woman. Woman. W-O-M-A-N. Woman. Or a Robert, we come to Catherine Kuma. Listen, go and check about Ora Robert. He was very popular. He had TV station. Or a Robert, we come to Catherine Kuma's meeting. She he will sit down. He's not preaching, no. It's like it's the equivalent of Pastor Adeboe. Coming to some, a woman's meeting. Not to preach, but to be blessed. Because the level of miracles that he was seeing there, it was uh, something else. Kechikuma was the first person that started this blowing business. <laughs> you understand? Kechikuma, once hmm, she finished a crusade, listen, I, I, I sometimes I, think, I used to think it was exaggeration, but when I did my class, I said, oh, this thing was true. This woman finished crusade. So, because she finished crusade, the miracles were so much, she wanted to go out, a protocol wanted to take her out through the front. Everywhere was blocked, she couldn't pass. So they now said, no, let them take her 
to the back because it was in a hotel, a ballroom and all that. They took her to the park, to the kitchen. The people in the kitchen did not know. They were not aware that she was passing. They didn't see her. She passed through a corridor. As she passed through the corridor and she was passing like that, everybody that was cooking in the kitchen, they were slain by the spirit like that. Pa, pa, pa. All of them fled under the power, crying and calling out for God. The people cooking fell, plate fell, fork fell, spoon fell, knife fell. Because a woman was a, a woman that carried God. There is more in this life than all these vanities. Don't live your life without the written. Hallelujah. I was watching Pastor Chris the other time. I was eating like that. I started praying. Now, the video is a prayer. <laughs> it's prayer point. I just played the healing stream. I just played boom, kashata, kaba, ba, 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 ba. That is where I'm going to be. You understand? Do you know? Some people think some people saw a video. They saw people lying down on wheelchair. They saw people on a stretcher. They say, well, I've been there. Konsa arrange. Amen. Correct. I was, look, I, there was, I, two, at least I was there. I sat like this. I saw it. You understand? You, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a medical doctor. You can't deceive me. <laughs> Amen. There is one like that with oxygen, like that. Kidney failure. They put him on stretcher. When they out, get up. Yeah, he go to, I was running like 100, 100 meters. That is a measure of the Holy Ghost. Man puts people on stretcher. He was laying down people. Then he now stopped. And now counted them. Stretcher, oh! Something you will speak in tongues to build your own faith up. <laughs> Because the sight of the sickness is carrying you. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, in the name of Jesus Christ, all of you, get up. And all of them got up. I'm starting running. I'm celebrating. I'm healed. I'm healed. You say it's film. Go and act your own. Lost <laughs> your <laughs> productions here. <laughs> Bring Saeed Oktuba to come and be acting as though they are sick. Bring some Spanish people there. Because they were foreigners there. Healed. The degree to which you use what you will receive this morning will determine the next story. So when I'm telling you, preach the gospel. Don't live for yourself. Live for God. Live to bring the God, gospel to others. It is so that what is on you will multiply. There are different kinds of heart listening. Some people, you are being stared and you are burning on your inside right now. Some is indifference. Some is with offense. The kind of heart upon which this word rests will determine your next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 or 50. Rise up. Thank you for listening. We are sure that you have been blessed. For more messages, kindly search for our Telegram channel using the link t.me slash God has blessed you.